Hi everyone, this is Karim Abdelal and today I'm going to present my essay with the title Entrepreneurship, the Business Model of Uber. So before we start, we need to know how the story started. So it started with Greg Kim, the Canadian entrepreneur, and when he sold his company Stample Apple to eBay in 2007 with $75 million. After that, he was living in San Francisco and as I have mentioned in the essay, it was only 1,500 taxis in San Francisco, which made it very difficult for him to move. Despite the fact that he has a car, but driving in San Francisco was so difficult at that time. So one day he was watching the movie Casino Royale and one scene when he saw James Bond was tracing the car via GPS. And that time it was a science fiction. However, with the invention of iPhone in 2007, it could be possible. He worked on the idea that time and just left it alone until in 2010 when he met Travis Kalanick, who is considered the godfather for Uber. Kalanick saw that the growth is more important than profits, and that's why the idea of not having their own car, just using the normal people car. Later on, they didn't want to work on the idea full time, so they had to bring someone else to start to run the business. They brought the first employee to Uber ever, which is Ryan Graves. And that happened through Twitter when Travis Kleining posted a tweet that he is looking for an entrepreneur that looking for someone, I mean, and Ryan, he replied for him, here is a tip, email me at graves.ryan at gmail.com. And because of this tweet, he became a billionaire. Now, we are going to talk about the business model and revenue. Uber is the highest value private company in the world. More than Airbnb, SpaceX, and Lyft combined. Every day, 15 million rides are taken across 600 cities in 78 countries. Everywhere from Africa to the tiny Great Lake California, home of Red Suspenders Festival, I'm sure you're familiar. Uber is so successful because it's so convenient. Open the app and choose a ride, standard, luxury, or in India, rickshaw, or even soon flying taxi. Afterwards, you rate the driver and they rate you, 1 to 4 stars being the worst experience, 5 stars being the most amazing experience. However, an average of 4.6 can get a driver to be deactivated. Still better than Netflix thumbs up, to which I'm saying. Finally, Uber calculate the price, it's really very simple. Start with the regular base fare at the per minute rate multiplied by time spent in car plus distance times the rate per mile, all of which depends on city. A $40 ride in Tokyo costs only $1 in Cairo. Then add the booking fee, cancellation, cleaning, lost item fee, and so on. Unless there are too many riders, in this case they create something called surge. Two, three, or even seven times the normal price. As YouTuber has shown, algorithms can be manipulated. If drivers look out at the same time, they create a shortage and trigger a surge. And they use also machine learning to predict how many they are willing to pay based on the route. So don't call an Uber from the Burj Khalifa to the Bellagio, besides the fact you can't. Even despite this, Uber is almost cheaper, faster, easier. It took the most outdated, inefficient technology sprinkled in something called technology and completely reinvented the wheel. Oh, come on, you should know by now, there is always a twist. In the 1930s, the Great Depression happened. It wasn't great, but it was depressing. Every fourth American was unemployed and desperate for work, especially low skill, low barrier to entry jobs. But YouTube had not been invented, so they drove taxis, lots and lots of taxis. Meanwhile, fewer people could afford a ride, and I was told by Madame Safia that 
Line goes up and this line goes down, price fall and driver get angry. Like violent protests in the street angry. So New York City wrote the host act no legally like only 17,000 licenses called medallions. But 81 years later, with a million more people, it's only 13,000. You can see the problem now. The number of medallions issued is more political than it is practical. Before, extreme competition made price and sustainability low. Good for riders, but bad for drivers. And then the pendulum reversed. Bad for riders and good for riders this time. One medallion, the right to operate a single taxi, was once worth over a million dollars. But advice like this has not aged so well because Uber happened. The driver flowed the market by not requiring materials draining their value. High competition, low prices, and angry calls for regulation sound familiar? This time we aren't in an economic depression, but many householders are, which means a lot of drivers. For you and I, Uber is revolutionary. The low price of the century and the magic of these things. And for the driver, well, yes. If you ask Uber what the average driver makes an hour, they point you to this study, 19.19 dollar .19 and another say 21. Not too bad unless you look under the hood. What they don't include are the car, its depreciation, maintenance, gas and some of the insurance. Adjust for these things aren't rosy. This study estimates that the median hourly profit is 80.55 before taxes, less than minimum wage for 44% of driver. 8% actually lose money, but we can say that Uber is supplementary. Well, that's mostly true because about 60% have another primary income. Plus, unlike taxi, who are even legally required to wear black socks in LA, in Uber you have some freedom, you don't have to wear socks. Uber consider its driver not employees, but independent contractors. Employees are entitled to minimum wage, gas reimbursement, overtime, breaks, collective bargaining, paid leave, and health insurance, which would cost the company more than $4 billion a year. So they are extremely careful to call their driver partners instead of that company but a platform, simply connecting either to driver who decide when to wear, what to wear, and so on. But Uber control the prices, and that's the catch. Fair could be considered price fixing. So, what are they? That depends on who you ask and when, and the answer will shape the future of the industry. But something doesn't add up. The golden age for driver came from regulating competition. The same regulating Uber spends millions of dollars fighting. Going back to the days of high competition and low prices. But why? If Uber takes a cut from driver, their interests should be the same. Regulation, of course, is slow, it's gross, but there is another reason. Driver compete, but in Uber, commission regardless of who picks you up. Uber make more money with more driver, but driver wants the opposite, less competition. They look like the platform vendor relation, Amazon and its sellers, Apple and app developers. Both of which their vendor, if YouTube leaves the app store, Apple can't replace. But drivers are driver, they are disposable. Something like 96% stop driving from the company in their first year. The two seem economically intertwined, but however, they can keep first unsustainably competitive with rival. The real winners of host acts were in the cab driver who couldn't afford million dollars uh, medallions instead of driver giving away their $100 birthday rent. On paper, Uber has the perfect business model. It's a huge network of drivers dominate the globe. But it not need a single car or gallon of fuel. All paid but no work. Something Southern of started desperately try to emulate, most of which belong to flop starter with product like the Time Watch, which doesn't tell the time. So how did Uber lose four and a half billion dollars? That's twelve million dollars a day. Many startups sacrifice profit for growth, but Uber is nine years old now. Facebook made money after two years. The company's biggest problem may not be legality or controversy, also there is a plenty of them, but basic holes in its business model. The magic of so many companies is the network effect. Every customer brings another. You join Facebook because Steve is on it. Can you join Facebook because I am on it, and so on. 
For Uber though, there is nothing like that. Driver in New York doesn't affect drivers in Beijing. Also, it's felt in Beijing. That's the egg effect. Drivers need riders before they will drive, and riders need drivers before they will ride. That helps keep prices low and profits non-exist. It's inescapable and leaves only paths for over safe driving cars. Remove the driver, remove the money-eating machine. But it means competing with the technology of Google and Auto Express GM. Either I will transform to the biggest company, transportation in the world, or it will end very soon. Now, after you have learned more and more about Uber, my question to you is: Can you beat Uber? Can you invent something in the future that can be similar or better than this service? Well, that's the end. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. It was Karim Abdel, and good luck. Thank you, guys.